of the Rumble into the Silas because he just denies him so hard. He gets the Rumble ultimate and he just makes it work so much better for him. So yeah. by taking the Silas here, I expect that to go into Mickey. It unlocks the potential that Expect gets to play that Rumble now. And I like it because they took so much time debating on that first pick, but you can tell that Splice had a strategy ready. Splice, or, uh, Silas' first pick was the expected. Instantly, they lock in the Rise, they lock in the Zaya as a response. And I wonder now, do we see the Rakan taken away to limit this, or do they just respond with something like the Lux? I would think that you could go for the blind pick Lux here if you wanted. Um, you assume that it's going to be the Rakan, so I like the fact that he takes the Sivir. It's a very safe pick into that because you can just try to compete with the priority that Rakan and Zaya are going to pick. Very good at pushing together, especially when they're aligned. And then you also get the safety, the spell shield. So this is Hyarnan and Kasing saying, we're not taking the firepower. We see that they're probably going to get the Zaya and Rakan, and we're actually just going to take a safe backseat here. But curious that Excel didn't grab the Sona and the Tom Kinch that we've seen such a high priority everywhere else in the LEC. And if teams are paying attention, this could be a gut check to say that Excel don't play it. And it is such a power pick right now. This could burn them as we go through future weeks of LEC. For this game, though, however, neither team opting into any of those power picks, so it will not get picked up here in our first game of the day. Zyra Khan locked in for copying North Scaren. I think no surprises to see them play a more aggressive playmaking bot lane. That's kind of what we know North Scaren for. And for Hyarnan and Kasing, we wanted to see what their identity would be on this team, how they would function. And it's very similar to how it has been in the past. They are role players. They are kind of reliable rocks for the team, but they're not going crazy in the laning phase. Well, let's really hone in on some decision making. So there's the Lux ban. Lux support works really well into Rakan. Vedius has talked about it because Rakan works in lines. He dashes straight at you, and it makes it super easy to land the binding and then to blow someone up. The fact that Excel prioritized the Jarvan over the Lux. Again, this is kind of creating the identity for them as a team. We are willing to take a defensive bot lane for your Hyarnan uh, and Kasing and give more firepower towards the top side of the map. And when you look, of course, at their last season, I think no surprise to see a potential jungle pick like the Jarvan now prioritized for Kadrill because he was the big mover in the early game. He was the guy that made just about everything happen on the map. If Kadrill wasn't doing anything, Excel weren't doing anything. So prioritizing jungle does make a lot of sense. Right, but now it just means that they actually need to get off the ground because you gave Kabe and Norse Garen potentially a free lane with very strong scaling. And it is always terrifying. Kabe, of course, legendary AD carry, fantastic Zaya player, and Norse Garen has these big moments. Obviously had a lot of fumbles yesterday on the Tom Kench, but also has these huge playmaking opportunities. That's kind of how he came into the league on Rocket when we got to know him and see if he can live up to some of those highs today. I know that we kind of assigned the idea of the coin flip player to someone like Hilly because uh, Hilly, his highs are so high, but he can have really low lows. But I actually think it's more uh, apt for North Scarron at this point in his career. You're talking about, you know, some of those incredible plays that he can do, especially in the likes of his unsealed spellbook Braum. But North Scarron is so hit or miss for me, especially when he's now to someone as consistent as Kabe. I really want to have a magnifying glass and my eyes on Norse Garen and how he gets more comfortable in this lineup to take Splice to the next level with such a powerful ADC. And now as well with the Elise locked in and a Rakan on the bottom side of the map, a lot of setup for potential dive is going to make Kasing consider carefully his options for support. If you pick something too squishy, something too vulnerable, things could turn against them very quickly. But I, I love Elise in this meta for because I feel like anytime we see Elise, we're just about guaranteed to see tower dives, and early game tower dives are such a make or break for me in League of Legends. And I feel like the Elise was prioritized here because the Jace was still available. If you don't take the Elise here, um, then chances are that you can get it paired with the Jace, and since they have Silas, you can afford to run double AP and have the AD from the Jace up into the top lane, and it's such a dynamic combo. So I love the fact that Splice separated those two, and also empowered their own strong 2v2 in mid-jungle between the CC of Ryze and Elise. And interesting that they gave this final pick to come over to Kasang, of course, classic Zillion Hover. I'm always wondering if we're going to see a comeback. Can be a very useful pick for now, though, however, it will appear to be the Braum. Pairs up very nicely. It's not the Sejuani like you get in the jungle, but obviously pairs up nicely with any champion who wants to auto-attack a lot. You've got a Jace, you've got a Sivir. Some good synergy there across the team. And I honestly love what Splice are putting together. It is a little AD heavy, but Two very strong solo laners. You've got a very rock solid bottom lane, which I think is exactly what you want to draft for Hyarnan and Kasing. But honestly, anytime we see Vizachachi lock in Poppy Frostgarin, I get nervous for the other side. Because one second you're doing Elder Dragon, everything looks fine. Two seconds later, you're out of the pit and they've smote it and you've lost the game. So I think uh, 
I would be nervous if I was expect on the opposite side. Uh, yeah, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be about a hard camp. Obviously, if Poppy gets the potential to dive, Poppy dive at least dive is strong. I don't think that they're going to be in that type of position for that 2v2 top side. I still feel like Chachi here picked a weak side-esque top laner, something that can just survive everything. And the focus really is about playing around the CC on Rise, playing one uh, around the mid priority that Rise is able to get once he has a deep enough mana pool and he can shove those waves forward. And we talked about Humanoid being a player that we wanted to see step up for this team that could be the difference maker when it comes to making top three or be on the outside looking in. Maybe this is the game to do so. Once again, we heard about it. Mickey versus Humanoid. Humanoid, no longer his rookie split. Higher expectations on his shoulders now as we head in to Splice's fourth game. Will we see more from him this time around? Can Mickey show us his first all-star performance? We're going to have to find out. Here we get two incredible team compositions. Can't wait to see how they uh, play out. Eventually we'll learn when the graphic comes up. We're figuring it out. Play out. play out. Play out right about now. Yes. Go, graphic. Go. Please. You continue to impress me, Daniel Dragos. I mastery over production and graphics timing. I, Daniel Dragos, veteran caster. Ooh, I like the fan chance, though, coming in. And I think so far, neither of these teams are super happy about the start that they've had. Splice, one and two, obviously some very difficult opponents. And Excel, zero and three, pretty heartbreaking when you look at the changes that have come through. But Mickey is here now. Yes, it was a bad first game. A lot of it came down to a smite at level one, but now hopefully we see a slower, more calm start and we get a better indicator of what this XL team is going to be all about. I just want to echo what the XL coach was just talking about right there. Uh, the fact that Mickey, I mean, Foxtrap said it on the analyst desk, has a controversial, uh, you know, opinion surrounding him. Yeah, he, he was real bad in NA. That would be the controversy. That's, I think that's fair. Internally, he struggled. Internally, though, they're talking about like mental fortitude. And I think um, internally, Mickey is, is very upbeat. He's very positive, And he is actually looking to push forward, you know, Excel probably still have the win behind them despite their uh, scoreline to start the LEC. So Excel haven't given up on themselves yet. Uh, hopefully the fans are still there with them. This might be the time to strike. And of course, in the past, when it was best of three, I feel like it was always easy in week two to come in and make such strong statements. But in best of one, you kind of have to wait and see for now. Things going OK for Mickey in the early game, making fantastic use of the Petrocyte burst there. Get a little bit of wave clear down, the bot lanes as well. Now we talked about the setup CC. Of course, you have the Silas and Jarvan combo versus the Rise and the Elise. There's a little bit of it on the bottom side of the map, but do you feel like in the early game, pretty much all we have to look out for is these junglers moving into the mid lane? I mean, whenever there's an Elise on the map, all eyes should be on her, especially Xerces Elise. Um, I think him taking a leadership role into this team has been phenomenal. He usually is the guy that's leading a lot of these plays when they do have a strong early game. And I am specifically looking about what pieces of CC that he's aligning himself with. So I expect him to spend some time around the mid lane again probably after rise gets access to the tier or to the blue buff so we can compete with some shove and maybe taking advantage of creating pressure for this bottom lane that is oh, so aggressive oh, lethal tempo and north scaring playing on the edge there are three stacks of the concussive blow but can't quite find a fourth level one is saying already almost entirely out of health gotta hope that he has some biscuits there or things are gonna get a lot more difficult but we knew that this was how it was going to go that excel had uh, put their eggs up and towards the top side of the map they gave kabe and north scare and they knew it was going to be the zaya and the rakan and uh yeah maybe you can try to compete with some of the priority but this is just such a potent and powerful 2v2 down here you should see the map stay like this and of course both bot laners starting with the lethal tempo as well so eyes on that early game wave clear Splice getting the level two first, going to empower them to keep a little bit of pressure up for now. Jarvan on the top side as well means they're not going to get a reprieve anytime too soon as the wave does reset. And while I'm always, of course, excited about Vizachachi Poppy for now, matchup, I would say, going as expected in the top lane where Jace, uh, fun fact, ranged champions kind of beat up on melee champions here in the early game. Yeah, he just wants to sit up there with the airy, uh, whittle him down, use the range advantage. Uh, he just needs to make sure that Kadril is underneath him, securing things like the Scuttle Crab, making sure that he can get uh, secured vision. You can see that there's a ward on the Raptor camp right there that Excel have placed, because for Jace to really shine, he needs to be unlocked to be aggressive. He needs resources, and that doesn't necessarily mean camping his lane, but just making sure that he has a safety net underneath him that he can be pushed forward. And right now, I like the way that the Excel team is backing together, sinking their backs for Kadril and Mickey. 
Although now Jarvan's going to see this as an opportunity to take away the Raptors, of course. Elise is back in the bottom side, so will not get punished. Always a bit nerve-wracking when you see the Rise is still there in the lane, but good steal away. And those little advantages do start to add up. You can see a two-camp lead for Kadrel coming out in this early game as Cersei spent a decent amount of time hovering on the bot side. Not even going to take the full camp. The maximum disrespect jungle steal. Yeah, but I'm actually curious about the TP discrepancy between Mickey and Humanoid right now. Um, Mickey got the opportunity to walk back to the lane. I'm not saying that that TP means that it's going bottom or going top, but there is now that window. So uh, Xerxes needs to make sure that when he picks his moment, if that TP is still there, that he picks the right moment because Silas can now participate in these plays, as can uh, Hyarnan. Always difficult. TP advantages, I feel like, are a thing that the second you are under fire, the second it's those high pressure moments that people often forget about, for so long, it's been the only reason that a lot more people haven't all end in the bottom lane, the looming threat of a TPing in top laner. Good ward. Well spotted. Cersei now has a choice here. Needs to clear out the Raptor. Still has not taken that final Raptor, so further delaying that spawn. And Kadrel kind of just threatening, kind of being a bully here. Now we see a small engage there. Unbreakable has been used. North Scaring flying forward, but now Sivir is in the line of fire. Hyarnan ignited. Are they going to commit any resources here? The flash forward available, but they will not use it in the end. Still a massively favorable trade. And in the meantime, the dive top lane. Mickey, expect Kadrel moving in. Vizichachi incredibly low. Cersei going to be the one in trouble. They're taking their time. The spider goes up, but she has to come right back down. Expect taking tower aggro. Vizichachi going to be taken down, but no! Turns it around! Mickey's next! Goodbye, Excel! And Cersei, with the information, knowing that the invade was coming, chooses to shadow Chachi, and Chachi's poppy punishes that dive right there. Yeah, she can dive herself if it ever gets forward, but more importantly, she's so difficult to dive. She was a perfect pick here, because if you see that all the firepower is loaded into Excel's top side or not, how do you punish that Poppy? And honestly, that's not even a play. They have the man advantage. Everything looks okay. Vizitachi is so incredibly low, but in this Alien River replay, so much tankiness additionally on the Poppy W. The CC potential between these two is incredible, and despite good tanking of the tower aggro, it just falls apart. God. What comes up must come down. Oh, gets the shield too? Yeah. Uh, but again, that was all set up from great decision-making and communication from Splice's members. The fact that they see Jarvan walking on the ward, the fact that Mickey felt uh, safe to do the roam there because he had the TP. Oh, no. He's like, I can roam top, I can TP right down uh, back to mid. But excellent shadow from Xerse. And now Vizichachi looking a lot more comfortable in this matchup. Ninja Tabby as well as the Doran Shield, hard for Jace to get any damage down. It's not going for the Lethality, instead going for the Black Cleaver. Smart against an opponent who's going to rush armor, but... Might want a little bit more under his belt. The Chachi is kind of bullying out here. And now it's just can expect actually force Chachi back out of this lane. Can he do enough damage to chip him out? You were just talking about all the resistances that he now has underneath his belt with the Ninja Tabi. And, and Frostgren, and we were like, hey, early game, let's watch the Elise. When we were watching the Elise under tower, I, that looked really bad for a second. I was pretty convinced that it was over. But things are just working out, and Mickey's walking up. Not going to take the time to clear out the ward, however. Has to move back into the mid lane, and I like that Mickey's constantly roaming. You yeah. said topside was important, and he is putting a lot of attention into the top lane. And it's Mickey playing around the window where he still has uh, mid lane priority. It'll get a bit easier for Humanoid. Again, once he has more mana, that he can start spamming his abilities, so specifically when he gets access to the blue buff. Um, and then that's where, hopefully, Mickey won't get as many opportunities to start cheating up towards that topside to try to get uh, expect something or fishing there that Humanoid will actually be able to compete to lock him down in the mid lane or look for roams himself. And you use the word cheating, but it does feel like to a certain degree that he is paying for those roams. You can see that there is a CS discrepancy now, 13 between the waves as it's going to start to reset. So clear advantages for Humanoid. If Mickey had been successful, obviously a very different story with a few kills under his belt. But since it has fallen short, there will be a small discrepancy there. It's rise very comfortably on the tier at this point in the game. And I like the ward behind from Vizichachi, trying to spot out any potential lane ganks from the Jarvan. All right, Frostgren, theoretical exercise as a former League of Legends coach. You're Excel right now. What is your next play? Things have gone horribly wrong one time. Presumably, you get more chances. Where do you take that next chance? Where do you take that next opportunity? I think the most important thing is gaining information about where Xerxes is, and he's going to be spotted by this ward right here. And then it's what does Cage will do with the information. The nice thing is, is he does have multiple lanes that he can try to gank. He can try to offer support to expect, shadowing underneath him. I wouldn't suggest ganking the poppy or diving the poppy. Or he can try to dig out this bot lane because North Scarin and Kabe are so far forward, which is why Xerxes is in this area. He's not looking to dive. He's looking again to give invisible pressure so they can continue to have this confidence to get those plates and pump Punish Yarnan and Kasing. And Kajal's response right now is actually kind of running around with a chicken without its head. He's yep. like, I need to farm, but my lanes are in trouble. Where do I actually attack? 
one, it just shows you how much can go wrong when a single play falls apart in the early game, especially in a lane that's supposed to be a strong lane for you. Because right now, Vizichachi is fearless, just walking into expect. Gonna get the knockup, gonna get a bit more damage, and using the ultimate there, but just bolt. <laughs> He's like hurting the creep. These are my creeps. You will not touch them, he says to expect. Also picks the moment when the cannon wave is underneath the tower, so he actually doesn't even miss anything while he chases Jace down the lane. But here comes the next play from Splice. Has now been spotted. The vision is going to be crucial. Taking the time. Realm Warp is coming down. Ultimate's going to be used. They're running for their life, but the point-click CC will be available. Prong shields the wrong way! Oh, that... If he had gone down there, that would have been a truly, truly embarrassing moment. But no, Kasing manages to make it out with his life, is forced to burn the flash and the heal. So much pressure moving down on the bottom side of the map. We saw this from Misfits in their first game up against Rogue, shutting down Woolite. And now we're seeing it here as well, up for Hyarnan and Kasing. Yes, the CS discrepancy isn't quite as massive, but 93 to 76, I think two tower plates as well. Spice are building so much of a gold lead here in the early game. And I think it's the gamble that Excel took from Draft, where they say, okay, we can gracefully lose this bottom lane, but you shouldn't be hemorrhaging this hard, especially against a team like Spice. Again, we talk about Kabe and North Scan, but they're getting so much gold. Look at the discrepancy that's starting to open between these bot lanes before you even take into account the other discrepancies on the jungle. And this gives us a free reign of the bottom side of the map. Uh, Excel are frankly lucky that that's a Cloud Dragon and not something more significant like an ocean, like a mountain, like an infernal. An ocean obviously terrifying. I do, however, feel bad for Expect, who is going to have a slightly faster poppy running at him. Of course, closer and closer, however, to the Black Cleaver, that is going to be a big difference maker. Ninja Tabby and the Bami Cinder on the side of Izachachi. And right now, Spice, I think, very comfortably in the driver's seat, very much set up to kind of dictate the pace of this game. And Kedril is going to respond at least with a play here around the Herald. This can be massive. This can start to shift the gold back in their favor if they're able to use this Herald effectively. And for now, it doesn't look like Spice have any intention to contest. Yeah, and I actually like this. Um, so Kedril's finding his footing again. Okay, I can't attack any of my lanes, but we can get them out of the lane phase and just try to break open the map in a different way. So we're trading bot tower for hopefully a future tower, depending on how Excel use that Rift Herald. But I like this highlight here from our observers. You can see that just all the free farm that is going into the pockets of Kabe is going to probably finish up that first item. Already has all three components there of the Essence Reaver. Round two. Zichachi, though, stepping forward. Maybe not the optimum time, but he can use the Poppy ult. He's going to get knocked back over. Well played by Zichachi to buy a bit more time. Still incredibly tanky. The lower gets is at that threshold. He's going to grab a shield. Flashes out to safety. Zichachi's still alive. The flash forward. He's they can't kill him. him. Zichachi does not go down. The dodge on the stone ultimate. Norskaren is here. Moving forward. He wants to play. He may have been up more than he can shoot, but he leaps right back to the team. My god, you cannot kill this poppy. And meanwhile, Kabe's down there just playing like PvE versus the creeps, looks up top. What are you guys doing up there? Just stalling for you, just giving you all this free gold, all this free time. Now they do have a ton of members on the top side. Humanite is taking a lot of damage. It's gonna make it a little bit more difficult to sustain a push here, but fantastic movement for Zichachi to make it out of that situation. Of course, kind of made that situation for himself, so I'm not sure how much credit we can give him, but the tower will be traded for a tower in the end. However, splitting this gold between so many members of Excel, whereas you now see that super fed sign, a one item and a half, 12 minutes into the game in the back pocket of Kabi. And that's the key there. It's the fact that Chachi was able to absorb enough time that it was a one-for-one -one tower trade. But again, all of that solo gold, all of that solo XP that went into the pocket of Kabe and Sivir and Zaya, uh, peak at the exact same time in terms of their item break points. So Splice are feeling very happy with the course of this game. They're like, we can actually just cruise control from here. It's funny because so often when Splice are winning games, I'm like, oh, it's, it's like clever early game pathing. It's just picking Poppy for Vizichachi is what this early game feels like. He's absorbed so much pressure on that pick. And now the basic lane phase has been broken open. You've got the bot lane switching to the top side and two more plates instantly going into the pocket of Kabe. The gold, he's just stacking it up. This man cannot make any more money. And I just want to give a lot of credit to Spice's coach. Oh. I'll hold that. You can continue. I don't think... Uh, but Splice were also the team that brought back the lane swap in uh, Spring Split. And the True. thing that made the lane swap work was understanding what top laner to play on weak side. When your top laner doesn't get resources, they use the Scion there and they're using the Poppy here. And I think it was just great to see what Excel had put together to recognize they're probably going to play for top side of the map. They have something like a Jace. Poppy is perfect here. So huge credit towards the draft. I think this was a great read to counteract the playstyle. And everything just going very much in the favor of Splice at this stage of the game. Once again, items coming in, all those plates going to the pocket of Kabi means we're very close, I believe, to two items. And you can see the defensive options on the opposite side. The stopwatch already used from Kajal. That's a terrible position to be in. But now Vizichachi 
the double-edged sword when he plays champs like this. Often he steps way too far forward, but Humanoid is here trying to find the knockback. He's going to miss it for the shot. He now starts to fall. One kill coming in. Humanoid trying to escape. Buys a bit of time. Where's the knockup going to go? Mickey's forward as well. Humanoid has overstayed as well. But four members strong here. The realm warp has been taken away. They're jumping back under the tower. Humanoid trying to survive. But there is the kill. Excel we're looking for. The punish on the overextend. Yeah, the hijacked realm warp to make sure that they can track down and also pick up a shutdown. Unfortunately for Splice, no one was set up on the map to trade anything back. But after the reset, they've got everyone in the mid lane. So they managed to scrape this one out. And it starts to build a little bit more hope. I like the coordination coming in, even with a newer member in Mickey. All of the team collapsing there on the bottom side as we look at it one more time. And again, my eyes were initially on the map. So what are Splice actually going to get with Chachi buying so much time again? Are they able to trade back some kills with Humanoid? Ultimately, it is a two for nothing trade. But he buys so much time that Rakan and Zaya are walking from base. They will get back to the mid lane and able to force down that mid lane tower. For Excel here, this is pretty much just cleaning it up. I like the Realm Warp steal. But the question for me was, was that a brilliant play from Vizichachi, or did he maybe... He got caught. Yeah, okay, good. I was, the, I was just going to say, because I was like, I feel best. like when your bot lane is in your base, that he, is not the time to be like, I'm going in, guys. It, it was a mistake. He made the best of a bad situation. Props to Zerse, who immediately went to the mid lane and just like put the on-the-way ping, and he's like, I'm forcing this forward. We must make lemon uh. or lemonade out of lemons here. <laughs> Oh, good old Big Chachi, never change. Once a game, I feel like just has that moment where he just wants to go in. And honestly, the first two very much paid off. Crazy survival moments that maybe should have been impossible, but that one, counting against him, however, does not really put Excel back in the game quite yet because it is still a 4K gold difference, Frostcar. And you talk about early itemization, you've got bits and pieces coming in for Big Chachi on the top side, but you've got the full first damage item coming in from Elise. You've got the Seraphs fully stacked and completed for Rise, as well as the two items in the back pocket of it. This still feels like a handshake between both teams to say, uh, you know, our, our true power spikes don't come in for a couple thousand gold. We're still looking at big item breakpoints, so maybe teams will get cute and they'll look for some picks around when they push out waves, but otherwise, I actually expect the game to slow down a bit here, especially in that mid lane. Maybe some play over to side lanes, but it's between the mid lane shoves. What you're looking for is, of course, the Zaya to hit that third item, because Kabe's like, why would we try to force now? Look at how fed I am. I'm like 1,300 gold away from just ending this game. I mean, honestly, though, I feel like if Excel overstand, you, you still have a one item advantage. Even if it's not the dream power spike, it's still so much of an individual advantage for Kabe. But we can talk about something cool uh, in terms of Sivir, and I want to talk about kind of like pressure that can be created on the map. So at this point, Splice, again, they're in cruise control. They're probably going to wait for Kabe's third item, and then they'll turn it back on, start looking for fights. But because they have a rise, and because they have a safe ADC like Zaya, who has that ultimate, it's very easy for her to disengage. They can constantly be pushing their waves very far forward, and and creating big pressure points on the map. Whereas a champion like Sivir cannot do that. She needs to wait for the waves to crash into her. And so while XL still have so much wave clear that they can stall out games, they can't create the same pressure points on the map to really pull Splice around and to formulate picks. And I'm curious now, with the BF sword picked up on the side of Hjarnan, if he's going to take a step away from the attack speed, go immediately for the Infinity Edge, or if he feels he's behind enough, to go GA second. I don't think that's going to be the case, but that IE, of course, a little bit extra attack speed just wants to hit really hard for those three empowered high attack speed autos. It's because at this point, you're just relying, and, and at this point in team fights, instead of looking for the attack speed because it's just about how much uh, crit your boomerangs will do and bounce back, you want to go Essence Reaver Infinity Edge because you just need to get one W off and then just hope that the uh, Sivir W uh, crits into the back line. Jesus, you're praying. You're putting your hands in the air and you're like, crit, 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 please. It, exactly, as opposed to itemizing for attack speed because Sivir is such still such a short-range ADC uh, when she's not relying on the bounce from her boomerang blade and you're probably not going to get to plant your feet against so many CC units in the game and get off multiple uh, attacks. Yeah, difficult spot to be in as well because you've got so many point-click options here. Well, now I'm curious to see exactly what the options will be from Splice. When we came into this game, I think Splice is the expected favorite, and now it feels like a judgment not on, you know, if they can close this game out, we can give them that benefit of the doubt, but how cleanly can they do it? Of course, there is still opportunities for Excel to come back, but Splice is a team, once again, that we expect to be in the top four. When you look at this team, when you look at their history, and uh, doing so, you have certain expectations. If, if it's going to be a clean closeout, is this going to be an Origin or a Fnatic or a G2-style closeout? Are we going to see them falter a little bit in the mid-game? I mean, so far the mid game has been very clean because they're just uh, playing around exactly where their windows are for power. Again, we said that the game should start to slow down. They're waiting on Kabe. Um, 
to complete that last item. And then I expect, again, a lot of explosions. Uh, still using the windows, looking for picks. On the other side for Excel, the fact that we had a tier come in so late for Chase, you know, they're very far away from when they're going to feel in control again for their composition. Excel basically are just trying to, to scrape the crumbs into their mouth about the waves that are pushed into them and just have mercy on a splice. Like, the clock is their best friend that Baron hasn't spawned. Only 19 minutes, and of course, only double Cloud Drake as well. Next one will be an ocean, but still not seeing the mountains or the infernals that accomplish such good scaling might like to see on the side of splice. And, you know, tears, unfortunate. You, you know, that's the I've realized now that I just need to have enough mana to sit in lane as long as humanly possible, build up to a potential stronger item. But it is going to be a while before we see that tier fully stacked. And, a difficult spot for Expect to be, especially when Jace, I think, historically was just such an incredibly dominant champion. But the last few games, I feel like we've seen him in EU, he hasn't been quite the force that he once was. I don't think he's as blind pickable anymore, especially when you have champions like Rumble running around. Uh, no surprise that Rumble was banned, and then you saw the Jace priority come up. And I think Jace is still a strong champion, certainly, because he is a range matchup and top lane, but it's really his combinations. Things like Elise and Jace are so strong. And again, Splice from Draft just did such a great job um, tearing everything away from Excel that they wanted to put together. Yeah, Comfort, absolutely not an option. Can't say the same for Splice, of course, with Humanoid. Getting something like the Rise, the Poppy as well, in the top side of the map. And the slower part of the game that you were talking about for Oscar and waves being pushed in. For Splice, it feels easy. They have so much vision, they have so much lane priority, they can walk in, they can place wards, and on the opposite side for Excel, when you take a look at their vision, it's it's the horror movie. It's, can we walk into this bush? Are they doing Baron at 20 minutes? We have to use the Scryers to find out. And, I think that's one thing we don't always get to appreciate from the Spectator client is that how, how truly terrifying it can be to play with so little vision and with so little control in the lanes. I do want to take a moment, though, to compliment Splice's lane assignments here. Um, the fact that Chachi has, excuse me, Excel's lane assignments, they're trying here. The fact that Chachi's sitting on, what, the, the Bramble vest, the yep. Sunfire, the Ninja Tabi, he is unkillable. Expect can't do anything to him. So they're sending Mickey against Poppy like, please, can you damage him? Can anything happen here? Uh, and then Splice can just control whatever lane assignment they want because Rise and Poppy can just be so far extended. Such a, such a brutal stance to be. And we talked about how this comp is very AD heavy. Of course, going to rely heavily on that Sivir later in the game. Expect. Run. He does land. Realm Warp is there too. Here comes the Rakan. Everybody and their mother wants to take a trip to the bottom lane. Splice going to grab that kill. And it looks like a tier two tower as well. Ah, uh, there's that vision line. The fact that Splice have slowly but surely inched it forward. They've got multiple control wards. Uh, Expect just didn't know until it was too late. And that's a free tower that should have just been a safe farming point there. And you can see Mickey doesn't even have the time to really pressure out anymore on this tier two nose. That he has to back off, that he has to be careful here. Norse Garen, though, moving into the mid lane. Sivir just has to walk away. Can't pressure that tower either. So, gonna deny a bit of CS. Gonna pick up a little bit of safe CS for both the AD carry and the mid lane on the side of XL. But otherwise, just a massive win for Splice. Yeah, and we're basically looking for Splice to reset here, um, again, on Zaya's reset. And then I think it's it's going to be Baron set at preparation time. So we're coming to that point of the game where it's going to be the big 5v5. The timer has run out for Excel. You got as much free gold as you're going to get as we shove the waves into you. Are you ready to try to take on this 5v5 beast? Because there's the Infinity Edge on Zaya. <laughs> well, and this is also when we compare it to their game yesterday, I think still a better situation than they were in. And I do want to see on a composition that is, in theory, so incredibly strong in teamfights with the likes of a Sivir, a J4, the Silas as well, how good their coordination is as a relatively, let's say, young roster in terms of how long they've spent together. With that kind of damage, though, we may never get the opportunity. Splice probably could just 1 3 1, given how far ahead this Poppy is. Or just 1 4. Or just kill Kadril. Oh, no. And the, this is a difficult spot for Excel, I feel like. The, the gear here is we're done with Farmville, and now we're into, like, Rust 1v1. This is like yeah. we're hunting <laughs> kids now. Uh, Splice got full teeth, and they are just trying to bite down. And if Excel ever step out of line, uh, the bear trap will close very quickly. Yeah. The, the issue is right now with the amount of vision we're playing, Rust 1v1, but one of these guys has map hacks, and it, it's just... It's not fair for Oscar, and it no. feels like the second they come around the corner, they know. Because Chachi's going to go for a play here. Ooh. Mickey got nervous there for a second, you could tell. Why did he reveal himself? I don't know. I think he got scared, wasn't certain, now knocked into the wall, most likely gonna get chased down here. Mickey very much in danger. Big Shield comes in though, Cadrill here as well. Splice will back off. Don't really get anything for the play in the end. In fact, Vizichachi also using his flash, so despite 
good initial indicators still. Maybe not the best play. Expect, however. That's level 15 to level 13. There is nothing Expect can do right there. Humanoid knows it. Expect knows it. Uh, XL, that timer, it is just shrinking even further because something is going to break in that bottom lane. I mean, it's level 13 to level 15. It's full items completed to a very interesting, I feel like old school kind of Jace build with, with a tier item included in it. And... Uh, Normally when we talk about split pushing Frosker and it's like, oh, they've got pressure. Like they've got a little bit of damage threat. I'll back up. I'll give them, you know, they'll force the wave in and nothing's going to happen. But now there's a lot of kill threat from Humanoid on the bottom side. He knows he's there. He's going to step around. Mickey, who's baiting who? That's the question. So Excel are set up right now uh, where they have Sivir sitting in the mid lane and they're basically waiting for Splice to commit either top or bot side or hopefully overcommit if you're an Excel fan and then quickly use the Sivir ultimate to dash to safety. Um, but because Splice are playing it very patiently, not overextending themselves either for tower dives or even for a Baron setup and then just taking the free objectives, they're playing this out very cleanly so far. And interesting for Splice because while they're setting up Humanoid to split on the bottom side, it is meaning that they don't quite have as much vision to threaten the Baron at this stage of the game. And additionally, you can see only one blue trinket up and available on the side of the Excel. Kind of a get out of jail free card when it comes to Baron setups. Buys you a bit of time. And two items completed for Sivir. A whole item behind. Definitely not where you want to be, but slowly getting closer and closer. Two and a half oh, items. Two and a half. The, the half came in as I was making my point. Thank you. And uh, so closer, at least, to Sivir being a very powerful threat in these team fights. And. From the gold, we can see that, yeah, uh, it is definitely a full item difference in gold. We just have not seen the bits and pieces come in for Kabi yet towards that fourth item. That is a huge gold difference between the ADCs, and you can see it really reflected in the farm. Oof. What's our, our sponsor, Foot Locker? Foot Locker. Hyarnan's sitting on, like, some, some Pumas right now. He doesn't have his, his, his brown bags upgraded to Berserk Greaves. He needs, the, he needs the Jordans. Absolutely. Oh, God. Just have to see. Because, like, three item, obviously terrifying, relative, very strong power spike. When you're competing against another three item carry, four items, definitely just better. And, uh, ooh. Hyarn and I feel like very confident to step forward there. I would not have been so confident. I'd be fair, I'd be hiding under my tower, though. I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat. League of Legends. I, I like the fact that um, Splice are trying to abuse the power that Rise has in side lane as opposed to grouping up. That is where Excel's composition would try to fight back here because Sivir still has access to the Essence Reaver and the Infinity Edge. So, you know, with the Cataclysm, with a couple of bounces, there still is power there for Excel, even though I think that Splice are, are stronger, but they're not giving Excel that opportunity. Now, maybe they get impatient now, they immediately walk to Baron, but I like the fact that they're just trying to abuse how strong Poppy and Rise are. Makes a lot of sense. You can see now, Scryer's Bloom has been used, will be taken away. So, a little bit of vision down here as well, though. You can see a lot of control wards in the inventory of Splice. They have all the tools necessary to set up for Baron. It just depends on if they're confident enough to pull the trigger, or if they even feel like they really need to, as we do see every time the Jace and Rise are left alone. There's a lot of damage that goes down. Baron has now been started. Potentially a huge catalyst, a good opportunity. I think Vizichachi walking past the control ward and opting not to hit it is a dead giveaway that it has been started. On the hunt has now been used. Splice immediately backing off, however. Happy just to get those small cooldowns. And Rise, once again, continuing to pressure on the bottom side. This time, however, they have sent Jace back to the mid lane to watch the waves. It will be the Silas versus Rise 1v1. And a lot of damage coming in from Humanoid, instantly forcing the flash out. Realm Warp is here on the bottom side as well. Can he get out? Yes is the answer. Well played, but with two members committed, immediately Splice just turned right back to the Baron. Good fundamental League of Legends. They lack a major damage. Source Kabe is on the way. This is going to be a slow take. XL will have time to respond. I think the only uh, caveat that I want to the setup from Splice right now is I actually wish, Nor wish Norse Garrowin would be ready and hiding. Uh, because he is on the likes of a Rakan, it feels like Splice aren't confident enough to have the full 5v5 on top of the Baron. They obviously don't want to smite contest. Now you have to wait for Humanoid to get back into position to pressure that bot lane before they approach Baron. And I just think kind of like the next evolution with as you Rakan, get a control ward, set it somewhere they don't suspect, and when Excel go to check that Baron, which you know they're going to have to do, then have Rakan look for the big engage. The Hillisang. The, Hillisang. Classic, the classic hide in a random bush, find the perfect flank, try to win the game in a defining moment. Have not seen from North Garen yet. This game, of course, plenty of time still. Does have the control ward in his inventory, so he's halfway there, Frost Garen. In fact, a lot of control wards in the inventory of Splice, as well as the Warmog's armor for Vizichachi. So the Poppy, outside of mana, really never going to be forced back. And the continued side lane pressure is only going to get more irritating as we move later in the game. 
Now, of course, every time Splice don't take the Baron Crossground, every time they don't get a greater objective, things do get harder. Now we're going to see the engage in the mid lane, though. Cable stepping forward immediately. We're going to see the turn, though. Vizichaki trying to find a disruption. On the backside, though, Kabi remains alive. Disaster now striking for XL. They felt they had to pull the trigger, but that was not the time. It was just desperation and overly forced right there. Now Splice have so much more confidence to approach this Baron since the jungler is dead. Gonna be an easy take. Not even gonna see contention on the opposite side. Just bot lane farm in the eyes of Hyarn and Splice grabbing the Baron 28 minutes into the game. A 10k gold lead. A slow, confident closeout feels like it is on the horizon and Splice not really giving up any control in this match. And the gold lead and the scaling on both these compositions just spoke for itself right there. You saw Excel basically run face first into the meat grinder. There is so much zone control also on Splice's composition uh, between the Zaya and the Rise. It's so difficult for Hyarnan to ever approach that, and he's the primary source of damage at this point in the game. What is Sivir supposed to do? Nothing. Farm a side lane, and for now, pull back Excel. Maybe hoping to get something more here. He aren't able to freely hit the wave. We'll get some of those bounces across, but Humanoid's on the top side. It's four versus five here. Humanoid can, of course, instantly step over, and Kabe doing a lot of damage to Yarn and Garnet stepping very far forward. Unbreakable there to block it, but Kabe continues to walk forward. Flash. He wants to kill. Gonna throw two forward. Now the knockout comes through. Yarn is dead. Immediately the engage keeps coming through. The Saya is just too strong. Kabe is fearless. Mickey next on his list. Double kill for the Splice 80 carry, and that should be the game. And it just frankly looked too easy from draft all the way through the early game. It was a picture-perfect game plan from Splice. They undid Excel at every single corner. Some fantastic individual plays from Vizichachi now trying to double down on that praise as we move a little bit later. Focus not even on the Nexus, only Xerxe with his eyes on the prize. Splice will find their second win of the split. Like you said, credit to Chachi right there. It was him who had to hold strong, seeing that Excel had his number. He was there for the dives. Zerse made a great call. He saw Jarvan move in over the board. He shadowed underneath his poppy, and they turned that dive on its head. That was the full counter. Absorbed it all, threw it right back at him. A reason why we always look at Visit Chachi whenever he plays this poppy is because, uh, you know, you never, you never know. You know there's an outplay coming. You don't know where it's going to happen. This time around, it was in that early game on that top side of the map. And Splice continuing to prove that for teams below them in the standing, they are a death sentence. The second they get a lead, they do not let you back into that game and excel. One moment where they pulled the trigger, where they went in, where they looked for the fight. And unfortunately, I feel like not only did, of course, both teams, I think, play the fight relatively well, they were just simply too far behind. The Jarvan didn't do any damage. No one else could get on top of the Zaya. And well, you know how Cop plays when he gets four items. It's uh, it's not a pretty thing to play against. Unfortunately, that was one of those situations where the game basically ended at about 10 minutes in. At that point, the, the composition was just never going to find another window where they would find their footing back into the game. But still up to Splice, they had to cleanly close it out. But once they were put in the driver's seat, that they were able to just slowly put their foot on the gas. Of course, Splice now 2-2, two and two, tied up in the record overall. And tougher start to the schedule, as mentioned before. And I'm curious to see how they continue to advance as we move forward in the weeks. On the opposite side, Excel. I would say a heartbreaking start to the split, but I feel like that's unfair. You do have a new player. You got to give this team time to ramp up and see uh, see how they play. It's also about goalpost setting. You know, what does an Excel successful split actually look like? Is it making playoffs? Is it just getting more wins than they had in spring? And because this team is so new, the roster is brand new. I think people will give them a lot of leeway. So as long as they're not last place, probably going to be a win. <laughs> Okay, slow, steady improvement. Now, that's kind of difficult for me to set goalposts, but one thing I can do is set up this replay with highlights from probably the best poppy in the world. We're going to give him that title. It's official now. Best poppy in the world. He's in Let's EU. Watch he it. gets it. <laughs> so this was the, the turnaround dive. And again, the only thing that this doesn't show is the, the decision making. And, and it's so it's so easy to, uh, you know, praise players and celebrate them when they make out plays like this. That looks cool. It's very flashy. It's such an incredible play to pick up the buckler right there. Um, but it was still Xerxes' decision-making to communicate that effectively to Chachi to make sure that he was there for the dive. And my god, Frostgrin. I... It makes me want to play Poppy. It also makes me want to ban Poppy. I don't know how to feel about it, but uh, it excites me as well. And of course, the whole team coming here to collapse. Norse Garen, you can tell. He, he sees his moment. He feels that Norse Garen moment. Doesn't come through, but 
in this final fight. I think the only character that matters here is the Zaya, and you'll notice that she really never has to stop auto-attacking. And we were talking about this during the game. You know, the difference between Zaya and Sivir is that Zaya, because of her ultimate and how safe she is, she can be super far forward down a lane, creating pressure. They thought that she had overextended, but Kabe showcasing right there how hard it is to lock down a Zaya because she can stall for so long and then turn fights around since she has her own CC and her own zone control. And additionally, just so many things went right. In, in the Vizichashi Tower Dive, obviously the most immediate option. But when you look back at this game, your options for Kia player of the game are Vizichashi, Zerse, and Kabi. You can head over to at Esports on Twitter and vote now. That's tough. I think, I it's, think it's, it's Chachi. It's Chachi because he because he had the flashy play. But like I Zer wish it would be Zerse because he was there like too. best man for all of that. Best yeah, yeah. wingman. Best wingman. He's right. like, listen, he he saved some. Hands, <laughs> he saved some orphans from a fire. Yeah. He's got a great yacht, great haircut. He was just building up Chachi, just, just selling all the compliments. I don't know what half of that meant, but the, don't you don't you Twitter? <laughs> to learn more about Splice's win, let's check in with Laura and Cersei. <laughs> thank you, Dracos, and thank you, Cersei, for joining me. Congrats on the win. Did you thank adapt you. in Com seeing that Excel was playing top side? Uh, so yeah, we had to adapt because we wanted to play both side, but um, we saw the the stacking wave towards Chachi and. Obviously, I couldn't just let him die, so I had to save him. I have some notes about that. Dive top, yikes. Can you tell me something about it? Oh, I mean, off. I don't think there is much to say other than they just broke their hands, really. Ouch. Like, we really didn't do anything. Like, <laughs> they made it easy for us. And it turned out better than yesterday. Can we talk about what happened? Ooh, I mean, th the thing... It didn't is, look like you at all, guys. Yeah, like, th this whole week of practice wasn't going to great, because, like, the internet was down most of the time. So the practice was really bad and that really showed on stage because we really lacked confidence and like the calmness in comms. And we had like lots of panicky moments where we didn't know what to do. So that really showed yesterday. You turned it around today, that's all right. And you got the, win uh, the week with one and one. Something is off because you guys struggle in the early game and it, doesn't, it, it wasn't like that before. So what changed? Oof. You used to be able to play from behind. I mean, we, yeah, we used to that we we, uh, we used to be the team who played for late game and just scale. But right now we are just playing for early game, and obviously some early games are better than others. What do you need to get back on top? A second. What do you need to get back on top? Uh, we just need to practice uh, to have the internet to practice again. <laughs> well, let's hope you'll have internet <laughs> next week. Now, is there anything you'd like to say to your teammates to wrap up the week? Well, I would like to say Chachi happy birthday, and uh, I'm sorry we couldn't get you the win yesterday. Well, thank you very much, Jose. And thank we're going to well. take a short break. And coming back, XL, uh, I'm sorry, SK Gaming will take on Rogue. Don't go anywhere, guys.